Based on recent reports, there are more people suffering with autoimmune disorders than cancer and heart attacks combined, and multiple sclerosis is one of those. MS affects 1 million Americans and about 2.5 million people worldwide, and it's a long-lasting disease that affects the nerves in your brain and your spinal cord. I've had so many people reach out to me and ask, what's the difference between multiple sclerosis and peripheral neuropathy? Can one cause the other? Are they both treated the same? Is recovery even possible? These are all great questions, and in preparing this video, I realized in order to give you good content, it was just way too much information for one video. So I've broken this video up into a three-part series. In part one of this video series, I'll cover what multiple sclerosis is, what's the difference between MS and peripheral neuropathy, and can one cause the other. Then, in the second video of this three-part series, I'll talk about if you can successfully treat peripheral neuropathy when you have MS, and is it even possible to treat or reverse multiple sclerosis. And finally, in part three, I'll outline a game plan for you based on the latest clinical studies to get both conditions under control and stop your downward spiral. You don't want to miss any of this. Coming up. always so good to see you again. If you're watching for the first time, I'm Dr. Valerie Montero, leading expert in peripheral neuropathy, and more importantly, how to overcome it. My mission is to empower every peripheral neuropathy sufferer with the necessary knowledge to successfully recover and start living again. Today, you're in for some new and exciting information that I can guarantee you've never heard before. I make it my mission to stay up to date with the most current research. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, just click on the button and also on the bell so that you get notified as soon as I publish new content. One of our subscribers, Shantanu Kaushik, asked us to cover this topic on MS and neuropathy. So let's dive in. Part one, what is multiple sclerosis and is there a difference between multiple sclerosis and peripheral neuropathy? First, multiple sclerosis is a common progressive neurological disease that occurs in young adults worldwide. Now, let's start by making sure you understand what this disorder is, especially if you have it. MS occurs when there's an abnormal response of the body's immune system, causing it to attack the nerve cells of the brain and spinal cord. If you've seen any of my other videos, you may remember that this is called the central nervous system, or the CNS for short. Basically what happens is that the T cells, also called T lymphocytes of the immune system, begin to attack the outer protective layer or the myelin sheath of the nerves in the brain and spinal cord. Now, this is not a normal mechanism. T cells actually are white blood cells designed to fight off infection and foreign substances that made it into the body. They play a significant role in battling antigens and even tumor formation. Usually, the T cells can tell the difference between foreign or infectious organisms and your own cells. However, there are times when these T cells mistake your own cells as foreign invaders, which will cause an all-out assault on your own cells. This is what we call an autoimmune disease. So with multiple sclerosis, this attack happens in the nerves of the brain and spinal cord, and it can leave a person with a wide variety of neurological symptoms like fatigue, numbness and tingling, pins and needle sensations, pains and spasms, sharp shooting pain, difficulty walking, loss of balance and coordination, muscle weakness, muscle tremors, dizziness or vertigo, trouble swallowing, slurred speech, visual problems, bladder issues, sexual dysfunction, and this really is just a few of the many, many symptoms. 
This disease is a slow progressing disease and the symptoms can become very severe after about 10 to 15 years of living with it. You might even develop blindness, paralysis, and diminished brain function. MS was once thought to be solely a genetic or hereditary disease. However, what researchers are now realizing is that your genes only determine your susceptibility level for acquiring this disorder, while your environmental factors play the largest role in determining whether this autoimmune disorder will be affected. Now, that's actually great news when you think about it, because in true genetically acquired diseases, where there is a gene defect, it's usually impossible to reverse the condition. But if the environmental factors you've been exposed to have flipped on the switch to turn on this autoimmune condition, well, under the right circumstances and with the right tools, the same switch that was flipped on that started this can be flipped off. That's exciting. So what are some of the environmental factors we're talking about? This is an important side note that I want you guys to pay attention to. So environmental factors are going to be things like our standard American diet consisting of processed foods, tons of added sugar, not to mention trans fats. We've all been hearing for decades that our food or beverage choices can potentially destroy our health. And now we're actually seeing the proof of this by the rising rate of autoimmune diseases and even cancers. Other environmental factors that can flip the switch on are chronic antibiotic use, exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals like pesticides or herbicides and other out outdoor chemicals. Also household cleaners, exposure to numerous chemicals and personal care products, smoking, and constant sleep deprivation. Now, get ready for another critical side note because this one is a huge culprit that really has only recently been identified and linked with autoimmune disorders, and that's dysbiosis of the gut microbiome. And these are just a few. Well, let's look at how peripheral neuropathy differs because you may have noticed there's some overlap in the symptoms like numbness, tingling, pins and needles, loss of balance and coordination, to name a few. I won't go into all the symptoms of peripheral neuropathy in this video, but if you wanna learn more, I'll leave a link in the description box below to my video, What is Peripheral Neuropathy? So here are three differences and they're big. Difference number one, Although both conditions deal with damage to the nerves, they don't involve the same uh, systems. For instance, peripheral neuropathy is damage to the nerves in the periphery of the body, which is outside of the brain and spinal cord. And that's what we call the peripheral nervous system. While MS is a central nervous system disease affecting the nerves of the brain and the spinal cord, as well as the optic nerves. The second difference is that the symptoms of peripheral neuropathy will occur on both sides of the body. For example, both feet or both legs, where with MS, the symptoms will only affect one side of the body. Also, MS produces a much wider range of symptoms than peripheral neuropathy. And the third difference is symptoms of MS usually develop within days and persist for a few weeks, but then they tend to go into remission. On the other hand, peripheral neuropathy symptoms typically develop slowly and consistently over time with worsening in the magnitude and they're chronic, they don't go into remission. Now that we understand the differences, let's discuss if one causes the other. Decades ago, it was thought that these two conditions were independent disorders of the nervous system. Now, science has shown that multiple sclerosis Although it's a disorder of the CNS, it can cause peripheral nerve damage by the same mechanism which is tearing down the myelin sheath or that protective coating around the peripheral nerves, as well as in the brain and spinal cord. As a matter of fact, within the past two decades that we've worked with peripheral neuropathy cases, we've treated a few multiple sclerosis patients who came to us because they had developed peripheral neuropathy. So, what science has discovered is that peripheral neuropathy does not cause multiple sclerosis. However, multiple sclerosis can and very often will lead to peripheral nerve damage and neuropathy. In fact, 
This was first reported in medical journals since 1981. And since then, there have been many, many cases reported on this. Well, that's it for part one of this video series. Make sure you watch part two of this video series where I'll cover if peripheral neuropathy can be successfully treated if you have MS and can both of these conditions be reversed. As always, thanks for watching and following us and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There are so many people out there who are alone and left feeling hopeless in this battle with peripheral neuropathy. So I'd like to ask you a favor please like us because it helps YouTube's algorithm get our information out to more people who truly need our guidance. Until next time, my friends, I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. Blessings. And your environmental flactors. Your flactors? my flactors, baby. <laughs> my environment's got some flactors. <laughs> Play the largest role. <laughs> Thinking of flactors. <laughs> <sighs> okay, serious. Um.